Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. There has been an attempt to unblock the dialogue between the Polish government and the European Union Commission about the former's judicial reforms. The Vice President of the European Commission for Values and Transparency, Vera Jourova, visited Warsaw today to discuss the changes with a number of Polish politicians. Will Jourova's mission be successful? It's difficult to be optimistic at this stage, especially given the parties she didn't meet. The EU Commissioner has offered her openness for talks even before her trip started. She stated that she favors dialogue with all the sides of the issue and will listen carefully to all explanations and remarks about the situation with the continuing judicial reforms in Poland. The Commissioner Vera Jourova expressed her concern about some actions against judges in Poland. So far, the dialogue is taking place with some parties being omitted, like the National Council of the Judiciary, the Supreme Court Disciplinary Chamber, and the Supreme Court Extraordinary Control, and the Public Affairs Chamber, whose presidents asked for meetings, but the European Commission did not agree to hold meetings with them. During the meeting with Elżbieta Witek, the speaker of the same, the Commissioner Vera Jourova was assured that all the changes are being introduced in accordance with the European Union law and with the Polish Constitution, while the present government was elected in democratic elections and received the mandate of the voters. One of the election promises was reform of the judicial system. Uh, understand better the situation in Poland and uh, I find it as a maybe good start for, uh, as I said, opening the dialogue and uh, seeking for long-term measures. An example of the European Union's double standards is the rejection of the debate over the beating and clubbing of judges in France by the intervening police forces. They decided to debate similar problems in the countries of our region instead. It is a profound example of the hypocrisy of the European Union. Outside the same, Commissioner Vera Jourova met the Minister of Justice, Zbigniew Jobro, and Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Paweł Jabłoński, President of the Constitutional Tribunal, Julia Przyłemska, the Polish Supreme Court First President, Małgorzata Gerzlow, and the Commissioner for Human Rights, Adam Bodnar. Opposition politicians will meet President Andrzej Duda tomorrow afternoon at the Presidential Palace in Warsaw. The topic? The judicial system and the government reforms to it that have generated some controversy. The director of the president's press office, Marcin Kendrina, said that representatives of the parliamentary clubs had been invited following opposition requests for such a meeting. <music> Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki is making a two-day visit to Berlin. Today, his visits including Sachsenhausen, the former Nazi concentration camp. The talks between Morawiecki and German Ch Chancellor Angela Merkel focus mainly on how historical issues influence current policy and relations. There are some people who are trying to distort the historical truth. This is why yesterday during a concert that I was invited to by Mrs. Angela Merkel, I touched on the subject of the most terrible genocide of the Second World War, which was the Holocaust. I also mentioned the Gulag, the Russian system of the concentration camps. People were dying because of starvation, freezing cold, diseases and were also executed. The sporting world is mourning Kobe Bryant, the legendary basketball player who died on Sunday in a helicopter crash, along with his 13-year-old daughter and seven other passengers. Bryant was 41 years old and had played for the Los Angeles Lakers for 20 years before retiring in 2016. Following the preliminary investigation, the National Transportation Safety Board stated that the helicopter with Kobe Bryant on board was flying despite difficult weather conditions. At some point, the pilot informed air traffic control that he was trying to avoid clouds. pilot requested flight following to continue to Camarillo, but Southern California Tracon advised the pilot that they were too low for flight following. Approximately four minutes later, the pilot advised they were climbing to avoid a cloud layer. Some experts have already speculated that the cause of the crash might have been thick fog. It was also revealed that due to difficult weather conditions, the police helicopters weren't flying that day. However, Kobe's pilot asked for a special permission to fly, which he received. There is a impact area on one of the hills, and the, a piece of the tail is down the hill, on the left side of the hill, uh, the fuselage is over on the other side of, of that hill. 
The aircraft had no black box. Nonetheless, a tablet with an app monitoring weather conditions was found at the crash site. The tragic death of Kobe Bryant was a great shock to his friends and colleagues from the NBA, as well as to other sport leagues from all over the world. We played basketball uh, on the same team from my sophomore year to when I graduated and uh, remained friends ever since then. All of us know what a great player he was, but he went beyond great playing. He was a competitor uh, that is that goes unmatched, and it's what made him, uh, as a player, so attractive to everybody, that focus. I just don't have a lot to say. I, uh, the news is just devastating to everybody uh, who knew him, known him a long time. And... Uh, You know, he, he just, he, mean, he means a lot to me, obviously. Nine people lost their lives in total in the crash which took place in Los Angeles. The famous sportsman was flying in his private helicopter to Thousand Oaks for a basketball match in which his 13 years old daughter Gianna was due to play. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather. Poland Daily Business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.